Hi, I'm Scott Wrighton, and it's my pleasure to serve as Decatur City Manager and to bring you these weekly updates. It's uh, been a long time in coming, but as you may have seen in the media, this coming Friday, June the 11th, the state has decided to move to what, what they call Phase 5. Now, this has been tentative for a while, but uh, the most recent announcements from the governor's office indicate that we are, in fact, going to be going to Phase 5. <clears throat> Now, for a while, phase five was described as something that was akin to going back to normal, as normal, we understood it anyway, uh, to pre-pandemic times. And I need to make clear that that's not what it means. Phase five comes back to perhaps what the state and the Department of Public Health would call a new normal. It does not eliminate masks. Masks will still be required on public transit. It'll still be required in medical facilities. They'll still be required where a local establishment, say a restaurant, might require it if they're putting a, a sign on the door that says masks are required for entrance and you still have to abide by that. Uh, but uh, restaurants will not be required to do that. One of the other impacts of phase five is that capacity limits are taken away. What uh, is also in place is that persons who are not vaccinated are expected to wear masks. For example, here at the Decatur Civic Center, we'll be putting up signs that say, uh, when you enter the building, that if you are not vaccinated, then you need to be wearing a mask. So no capacity limits. Where the establishment requires it, then you still have to do it. We'll still be practicing reasonable and logical social distancing and cleanliness practices, and you'll still be required to wear them at uh, medical facilities and public transit. But other than that, we are back to as much of normal as we could be, given the fact that all of us still want to be attentive to the sorts of public health measures that are necessary to keep our community safe. At its last meeting, the, the City Council, acting in a way that anticipated the transition to Phase 5, modified its mask ordinance so that it tracks with the same rulings and recommendations that have come out of the Governor's Office and the Office of the Illinois Department of Public Health. <clears throat> there is good reason, at least in Macon County, for thinking that this is the right direction. For the first time in a very long time, our positivity rate here in Macon County has dropped to just under 1%. That's fantastic news. Not so fantastic is that the vaccination rate here in Macon County is at 35%. It's going up slowly, but it is going up very, very slowly. I cannot emphasize enough that your best defense against getting the virus is to get the vaccine. And there are many different opportunities. I won't list them all here. Opportunities and locations to get all three of the different vaccines that are available uh, for the general public. A few other things that are going on in the city. The City Council had, a, had its last meeting on June 7. At that time, they acted on one of the many different components of what we call our Capital Improvement Plan, a term we use to describe the, the street improvements that are scheduled for each year. Because our street programs are funded by different sources, motor fuel taxes, both state and local, by money from the federal government, by money that is generated locally, uh, it uh, the total program takes different shapes and what they approved on Monday night was just one component of that. The component that deals with replacement and upgrade of concrete streets as well as those that are uh, brick streets. And uh, one particular project it involves several different c concrete projects all over the city, but one that might be noticeable by many citizens is that the section of uh, the decorative concrete bricks that are on West Main Street in front of Millican University between Fairview and Oakland will be replaced. Uh, the problem isn't the, the, the surface bricks themselves, but the sub-base underneath it has started to collapse and sag, and so we need to pull them out and refix the base and put it back. Um, there are a couple other sections on West Main that, that need that, uh, that kind of repair, but the worst section clearly is the one that's there in front of Millican University. So expect some delays uh, in, the, in the coming weeks as the crew that the City Council awarded that contract to begins and finishes their work. One of the other things that the City Council has been keen to do in the middle of pandemic is to get federal money, federal relief money, into a program that we have partnered with Dove here in Decatur to do, which is to provide rent, mortgage, and utility assistance to people who have been displaced as a result of COVID and may be falling behind on their rent, their mortgage, or their utility payments. Unfortunately, these pro the, the, the funds for this came through the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And because of that, they, they have a lot of regulations attached to them. And so even though the folks at Dove have done a fantastic job at trying to get the word out about this utility assistance, nearly half a million dollars worth, 
Um, and they've had a lot of interest. People come in, pick up the forms. <clears throat> they haven't been able to approve much more than about 10% of the funds. And it's not because they're, they aren't working hard. They're working very, very hard, and we're pleased to be partnering with Dove. The problem is that the Department of Housing and Urban Development's rules have made it so difficult that people just can't meet the basic paperwork requirements. So our staff has gone directly to HUD and asked them to modify those rules to make it easier for us to get out the money. And so far we have not been successful at getting HUD to revise those rules. So recently we met with Congressman Davis's office uh, who pledged to help us out in working through that, that those bureaucratic delays. Now, just to be clear, because I don't want to have any of my remarks you know, censored by big tech, th this is a problem that is nonpartisan. It's been a problem under Republicans and Democrats for years that, that the HUD rules are so difficult that the, that the objectives that they're trying to fund don't get happening, or, or rather don't happen. So we are cautiously optimistic that we'll get some relief uh, from HUD to do this. And when that happens, the amount of money that'll be available uh, will, uh, will significantly increase uh, because the uh, uh, the rules will be easier to administer here locally. The American Relief the Plan, the ARP as it's called, is the Biden administration's funding program directly to city governments and county governments for them to uh, deal with some of their own revenue losses and the impacts to their budget. The ARP is going to be a test for cities and counties throughout the United States a test as to whether they will see these funds uh, for what they are, which is a one-time cash infusion intended to deal with some of those economic uh, impacts of COVID, or whether cities and counties will use the money to paper over some chronic and systemic problems in the way that their units of local government have been funded for a long time, or maybe even use the money to uh, add to their staff, uh, which will create a permanent uh, addition in payroll costs. Although the city council here in Decatur has not made a decision yet about how they will use all of their ARP money, we expect that will be happening fairly soon, I can tell you that their view is to be, is to be prudent about that and realize that one-time expenses should be used for, uh, one-time reimbursements of revenue should be used for one-time expenses so that it doesn't add to the, to the long-term payroll cost of the city. And so that in fact, by investing in key pieces of infrastructure or other one-time expenses, we can uh, make sure that the operating costs in the future are less. That's just a, a fiscally prudent thing to do and, and is the way that the city council is looking at that. So you can look uh, in the future and I'll be reporting in the future about how they make those decisions when the city council does in fact make those decisions. As always, I'm grateful for the opportunity to bring you this kind of an update from the, from the city council and look forward to future opportunities.